Hey guys, this one is a complete Shopify tutorial for beginners for this year. I wanna go through step by step from start to finish, getting an account, also editing everything within Shopify. So choosing a theme and editing the look and feel of your website, choosing apps, adding products, editing products, and everything else you need to do to get started on Shopify. Customizing absolutely everything that you need to get a great looking store and start selling on Shopify. So I'll also put a load of information, different materials and links to other helpful videos in the description so you can go and check those out just to help you getting started on Shopify. Other than that, let's jump into the computer and I'll show you what we can do in Shopify. Okay, so the first thing you have to do obviously is just create an account and I won't go through that because it's a very simple process. Just put in your email address and the important thing to remember is that your store address does have to be not silly or a joke because you can't actually change this. Even when you're logging in, when people wanna log in on your dashboard, they have to put your store address. So when Shopify asks you for this, it's basically this right here. MyShopify.com will be the same for everyone, but your store name name just kind of unique to you, but that is not going to change once you have this account set up. Yes, you can change the domain name later, but just go through that setup process, put your email address in, choose a name, and then we're gonna log in and get right into the dashboard. So this is your Shopify dashboard, and it's gonna look like this when you first open it up. The green ticks that I have here, you won't have them because I've actually added some products and customized things already, but we can go through these step by step. So if you are new to Shopify, this home screen right here is just gonna take you through everything that you need to do to get it looking basically like you want. And then around here, we have other things we can change. So why don't we just go through to our online store first? So if we click on this sales channel right here and just click onto our online store, you can see right now our store is password protected, which means that only people with the password can access it. Now, of course, when you do want to open this to the public, you can just press on disable password and then everyone can come and view it. But essentially when you first sign up for Shopify, you're gonna be given this theme, it's called debut. It's absolutely fine, it looks really good, but there are other ones that you can use. Now, depending on what type of store that you want and just really your preferences on how you want your store to look. You can actually scroll all the way down here and go to theme library. So Shopify gives you a few free themes. You can buy themes as well from Shopify. They do cost quite a lot of money. I think the free themes are pretty good. So we can go through and explore the free themes and see what we get. Depending on what type of business that you are and what you're using Shopify for, a particular theme may or may not work for you. Simple is really good if you've just got a lot of products and you need to sell them. But going through to something like Venture, you have this really big hero image at the top, which I just think looks really good. As you can see, some of the themes are really geared towards uh, bigger companies that have a lot of products that they need to just sell online. Other themes, for example, Narrative, if we click on this one, it's a little bit better at telling a brand story. If you're a smaller company, maybe you've only got a couple of products that you really need to tell a story around, then this one may work for you. You can go through all of these and have a look. Each theme also has styles as well that you can actually click through and they're completely different. So even though the theme is the same, the different styles could be for you depending on your company, of course. I actually really like narrative. I think this cold style also looks really cool. You just have a massive kind of hero video actually right up here, you can see hero video. This is this thing right here, it looks awesome. But you can basically go through and just choose anything that you want. I think Brooklyn looks pretty good as well. So why don't we just go through to Brooklyn. You can see we've got a big header slideshow of images and a dynamic product grid here as well. That sounds pretty good. So if you are happy with that, you can go to add to theme library, press that one and it'll upload the theme. What's really cool is that you can play around with themes that you have and you don't actually have to publish them to your site. So you can see right up here that debut is still our main site, but we've got this theme downloading right now. And I also downloaded narrative, that theme as well. You can basically play with them, change them, do everything and get them just right before actually publishing them. So that's really good. So we're gonna go through now and I'll show you how to basically customize a theme to make it look exactly like you want. So come right here to customize and it will load up the different page. And then basically you can drag and drop everything. It's a really simple editor. 
So my name is Coffee ZG, and in another tutorial, I went through how to set up a, a coffee website, but let's just try and go for like a florist this time. So maybe you've got some great images of your shop and also items that you sell. So you can see we've got home right here and catalog. That's the name for the shop. We should have some images here as well, but we can change this. So you can see that basically this part here, this section, is one section then as we scroll down this is another section it's completely different it's called collection list you can actually see that on the left right here collection list up here this is called rich text and slideshow so that's different this is a different section right here then as we scroll down featured collection you can see that right here featured collection that is another section right here and then underneath we'll have featured products because that is a section right here. So all of these on the left-hand side that you can see, these are the different sections that we can see actually on our site right here. The way that you edit them is by a section. So you can actually click and drag and move them around. So maybe we don't want the slideshow at the top, we want it just below. So you see these kind of three dots, whatever they are, you can just click and drag that and literally move it up and down to wherever you want on the site. And then that section will be moved there. So you can move around the sections in any order that you want. You can also click on each of those sections to edit it. So we'll click on slideshow right now, then it will take us through to this page. You can see that there's one slide and two slides. So that really represents one and two different images that people can slide between. And you can really easily edit those by just clicking on them. Then it will go through to, in this case, selecting an image. You can also change the position. So if we go back out of there, you will see that you can add a slide too. So I'll just add one and it expects me to basically add an image. So now we have three images we can slide between. You can actually come up to these three dots and just remove that slide and then it will go back to two. So if I click into right here, and then I'm gonna go through to select image right now. It's got some images that I've already uploaded, but you can really easily just add pretty much any images that are on your computer. So I've got some here and maybe we want this image. So you can drag and drop that right in. So I'm gonna drag that in, that's gonna upload. And once that has uploaded, you can press select on that one and it will basically bring it to that slide. So you can change or edit or remove it if you want. You can also change the overlay capacity, which might be important for you. So let's go back to that first banner and then we can see it. That looks really, really good straight away, like literally instantly this overlay opacity. Basically, you can just change how dark or light it is. I'm OK with it around here, so that'll be fine. So if we go back, it just looks so good already. So then we come out of that slide and we can add obviously another one to the second slide. So click on that, then click on select image again. I'll just drag some more images in there. Let's try this one, even though it is kind of the uh, wrong aspect ratio for this, but we'll see how that works. I'm happy with that. So yeah, all it did basically was just zoom in on that image. So we get a great shot. I'm gonna click select on that one and that's great. And then back out of there. So those two slides have two great images. The first one right here and the second one. You can change those however you like, but it just shows you how simple it is to instantly transform how good it looks. We also have an announcement bar up here. You can see announce something here. So maybe you want like a free shipping bar or something like that. So that's really easy. So we'll go out into the header and then we can just come down and we should be able to see it if we scroll down. We can see this is basically the uh, announcement bar. So why don't I put free shipping over a hundred bucks or something like that. So that's just gonna be a great bar at the top that you can announce something on. You don't have to press save or anything. You can just come out. If you ever wanna save anything, then it's up here. You can either publish it to your site or just save as a draft. Now we'll also want to change this text as well. And this is in the slideshow section. So click on slideshow, then we'll click on the first one. And if we scroll down, we should be able to find some of that text. Right, so we've got hero banner here. So maybe we want the best florals and then we can come down here and change this floral zg just like that now we can come out of there and what should happen is that we go to the first slide that has changed when you go to the second slide you can see it's still there but you can go into this second slide and either add to it or just use the same or take that text away if you want but that is how you edit it so we'll come out of there then essentially all the other sections right here, you can edit in exactly the same way. So this is our rich text. So let's click on rich text. 
use this text to share information. You can see that that's right here. So you can just edit this just like you would in Microsoft Word. We make the best floral arrangements in the whole entire world, something like that. So you can just make this really unique to you, but keeping the same theme layout that we've had. Then the collection list, obviously you can just upload a bunch of different images here. So you just click on that section to edit it. You have a ton of different collections right here. If this is too many for you, you can obviously just go into one and then click the three dots, remove that collection really easily, or you can just select collection and Basically what this is, is it's gonna group together either pages or some collection of products that you've created. And so that will feed through to us creating products in the future and also putting products in collections. So we'll get onto that later, but that is how you would edit that. So we're gonna come back out of there, then go back to the main menu. Featured collections and featured products. You're gonna need some products first, so we'll get onto adding products, but every section you can just edit it really simply by clicking on the link here and then just going through all of the different things that you want or don't want in there, uploading images, changing the text, just like you saw me do. This of course is just your home page though. So this is the first page that people come to. There are different pages. There's also catalog, which is actually the store main page. So you can add an edit to this just like you would normally the home page. All of these sections will be here on the left hand side. You can also choose how the collections are actually laid out on the page, but we obviously have a coffee here. The way that you would change this is basically by deleting this product because this is an automated page. It will just show all of your products. We've only got one right now. It's a bag of coffee. To get more products on here and to fill out this page, you would need to add products that wouldn't be edited in here because we're just editing the theme and the layout right now. So maybe you would want to change the header, put a logo up here and then put some text in. Instead of the word products, you might wanna put collection. In any case, you can edit that just on the left-hand side, just like everything else in this theme editor. So hopefully that explains how to do it. As I said, let's just click on save and we can save all of that progress. And then we can go back out into the Shopify dashboard and go through a few different things that we need to do, but mainly you'll want to add some products. So we can come right up here to products, click on that. Now, as I said, we've got this one bag of coffee for our product collection. Let's add another one. You can do that by going up here, clicking on add product, and it will take you through to the page where you can put in all the product information. I'm gonna title the product bunch of roses like this. And then in the description, it's a bunch of roses, but yeah, you can really fill this out with your entire product description. You can be really thorough with this, but the main thing is we definitely want to add a picture in here. So this would be the picture of the product. So you can maybe uh, just drag something in right here and that should be loading up now. You can add more media right here if you want, if you want more images, but that's good for me. So I've got that up. So that's gonna be our product image. Then you can come down to pricing and basically put in anything that you want. 30 pounds, all right. Now the cost per item is the cost to you per item. And you may not know this exactly, but it's good to put something in here because Shopify uses this to basically calculate your gross profit per sale. You definitely wanna try and put something in here. And yeah, as I said, it may not be perfectly accurate, but certainly it will give you a guide. So maybe try and work that out. And do you want to charge tax on this product? I'm happy not paying tax for now. So as you can see, it tells you the margin and your gross profit on each item. So that's a really cool thing. And you can actually go to analytics as well and see all of your sales and your gross profit and margin, which is really useful as a business, I'm sure you know. So yeah, you're definitely gonna wanna put, you know, like a best guesstimate of uh, what your items cost you uh, per item there. Down here, you can put your SKUs in here if you have them and any barcodes as well. Now a pro tip on this one is, if you do have barcodes for your products and that's how you do things, I would suggest switching to the, uh, the smartphone application to do this. The reason why is that in the smartphone application, and it does look pretty much exactly the same as this, obviously it's on your phone, but you can actually use the camera on your smartphone to scan the barcode, and it's gonna automatically enter all of that information. So yeah, if you are doing this and use barcodes, maybe switch to the smartphone app. I do have a smartphone app tutorial, so you can go and watch that. I'll put it in the description, but pro tip on that one. Then we can come down to the quantity, so how many of this product do you have available? Is this a physical product or not? Because you can sell digital products 
on Shopify. Then we come to the weight and I'm just gonna do grams cause you know, we do it weird in the UK, maybe 250 grams. So this is for shipping. Then the country of origin, again, important for shipping. So uh, United Kingdom for that one. Any other codes, harmonized system code if you need that. And this is really important as well, variants. Do you have different variants for the same product? So if you're selling maybe t-shirts, do you have five different colors or anything like that that would actually be the same product, but just different variants of it? So yeah, I'm gonna click yes on this one to show you how to do it. You can actually change this. So maybe there are different sizes, different colors, different materials. I think that's pretty cool. So let's just go different color. Then you can put in, you know, one is blue, for example. Do you wanna add another option? Yes, we can put red in here add another one and a green as well. I'm gonna click enter on that one. And is there a second option? Are there size options as well? So you can add a ton of different options that people can choose. So all of the different options that you have. And then as you scroll down, you can basically change the price of each of those items. So quantity on these is nothing. So maybe I'll go 200, 200 and 150 for that, for those different options. You can even change the price. So maybe red is just a little bit more expensive for some reason, put the uh, items identifiers in this right hand column. So you can keep track of absolutely everything, keep track of your stock as well. What's really cool as well is that Shopify basically show you how the product page listing is gonna look in Google. So the name of my product is Bunch of Roses. You can see my Shopify domain right here. And then this is the product description. It's a bunch of roses dust. So that's what it's gonna look like when it's listed in Google. You can actually click on that and change it as well though. So if you don't want that to be the title and description, come down here, change it and change it here. That will be what shows up in Google search results. So you can change that as you like. But once you're happy with all of that, you can just press save and that product will be added to your Shopify store. We can then go through and click on products and we should be able to see once it reloads. Yep, this is our product. We can click on this one again if we wanna change anything, but it's good to know that. And then you can go through and look at inventory as well. This will show you all the different uh, products, but all the different variants as well and how much stock that you have. You can manually edit the quantity available in here. As I said, when we were editing the theme, collections are really important because the homepage for this theme that we're using has collections. So you might want to add a collection on here so that it populates the homepage for you. You can see it is actually included in the homepage right here. So let's go ahead and create a collection. It's essentially a group of products together. So uh, bunches of flowers or something, you can name it here. This is the description for the flowers. And then right down here, do you want to manually add items to this collection or do you want a certain set of products that meet a certain criteria to be automatically put into this collection? You can choose that yourself, either manually add them or if you want to automate them, obviously just put the criteria for the products in here. You can do it by product tag, price, vendor, weight, inventory stock. So maybe you have a collection of uh, low item stock that you need to get rid of, something like that. You can change it like that. That can be done here. You can add many conditions if you want, or you can just simply add a few products to it manually. I'm happy with adding manually. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this collection. This is our first collection that we have. We can then go through to collections once more, just click on that. You can see we have homepage collection, bunches of flowers collection. Let's click on homepage. Right now it's actually got our beans in the homepage collection. Let's search for other products. We have bunches of roses. We can add this to the collection as well, done. That will add two products on our homepage collection now. They'll be displayed whenever you have a collection section on your homepage or any other pages. I'm happy with that. So let's just go through to products once more. You can also create gift cards in exactly the same way. I won't go through it just to save you, but it is very simple. You can basically just set up digital gift cards. Maybe uh, there's an amount of money that people can pay and buy in to send digital gift cards. That's really cool, I think. You can set that all up here in your product section. So once you have your theme sorted out and you've made it your own, you've added some products, you may want to go ahead and add some orders or at least add some customers. So having any customers on your site, you won't be able to put orders through for them. So let's just go through to orders. 
You can actually enter orders in manually. Now, if someone comes onto your site and orders from it, that's gonna be automatic. But if you do have a shop or you sell things in person, you can manually input orders, which is also really important. So what you can do is go to draft orders and we've got one here that we created yesterday. So you can see all of your orders in there really well, but let's go through and create a new order. So maybe you have something that you're selling, a customer comes into the shop, you can go through and put it in. So let's try a bunch of flowers and you can see all the different items that we have in there. So maybe we sold the blue ones for 30 so we can add to order. You can see that's in there right now. If you want to put another product in, just go and search for it again and it's gonna add it to the order for you. You can put notes about the order in here, so who you sold it to. Also really important is email for invoice, so that may be something that you want to add. You can mark the order as paid, pending, or pay with credit card right then and there. You're gonna to have to obviously create a customer as well. So we can search customers, and if we don't have any customers, we can create a new customer. So let's go through and do that right now. You can put their information in here, so self-explanatory name, email address is really important for the invoice. If you want to put their address in here, you can do as well, but certainly as important is name and email address. Also, I'm sure you'll be doing some email marketing, so maybe opt them in if they want to be. You can do that right here. That is how you add a customer. And then once that customer is there, these options here will actually be highlighted in blue. You can then go through and basically populate them and either mark it as paid as in cash or just go and take their credit card details right here. And then that will be basically your order done. Of course, if you have Shopify POS or anything like that, it's gonna be even easier than that, but this is how you do it on the dashboard for Shopify. We can also go through and look at our analytics and we don't have any sales data right now, but all of your analytics will be in here. So anything that's put through your POS system, anything that's done online or anything that has been input manually will all come up here. So your revenue, the amount of people coming onto your site, your average order value, total orders, online conversion rates, it's all gonna be in this dashboard for you. You can see it right here. It's all very clear in terms of what it's giving you. And that's why I said, Putting in your cost per item when adding products is also important because it uses that to basically populate some of this information. There's also some really great marketing options within the Shopify dashboard. So the first one is campaigns which you can create. This is for email marketing. So you can go ahead and create a campaign. Now you can use Shopify with Facebook ads, Snapchat ads. We won't get into that for this basic tutorial, but you can also set up emails so let's go through and do that because it's actually free up to two and a half thousand per month. You'll see that when I clicked on that, it's basically going to download the Shopify email client. This is an app that you can use in Shopify. So you're gonna to have to continue and just download that client. Uh, the Shopify email app is free, so you don't have to worry about paying for this one. You can now see that in our apps section, we have one app, which is the Shopify email app. So when you set up this campaign, it can maybe be a marketing campaign like Black Friday is around the corner, that's pretty cool. It's got some designs there for you which look really great. So if you wanna populate your store with emails, you can basically use these templates to basically send out a marketing campaign and it's gonna go out to your custom base. You can just populate all the fields just like we've done with everything else. So I won't go through that. I'm sure that you could do that following the instructions, but any marketing campaigns can be done through that section. Discounts is also really great. You can set up site-wide discounts or also set up discount codes as well. So we'll just click on that and you can set up a discount code. So maybe we'll do oct. 10 or something like that. And you can give basically a percentage off, so discount value 10%. And when people input this code, they can get 10% off their order. So discounts can all be done here. And then you can just click save and basically use that discount in your promotions. You can go through and choose all of the different options. So maybe they have a minimum purchase amount of 50 pounds or $50, whatever. Then you can put the dates in here. Just click on save and that discount will be there for you for the period that you choose. And I'll quickly touch on apps again, because certainly this is important in Shopify. There are so many apps in Shopify that can help you do many, many different things. This is basically like an app store and you can actually go and visit the Shopify app store right here. So let's click on that. It's gonna take us through to the app store. So you can search for a ton of different apps, maybe go through categories here. So what type of app are you looking for? 
Are you looking to do some marketing on your site? Maybe you want some affiliate programs or email marketing. So let's click on email marketing. There are so, so many different apps, but you can search for them all right here and you can maybe search by the most installed. So you get kind of the best apps. Privy is certainly extremely popular on Shopify. So we'll go through to here and Privy essentially helps you to market to your customers. So email marketing, you have some upsell within the store as well. You can add this app onto your Shopify pretty easily. And you can come down here and basically see, is the app free? This one's free to install. Does it cost per month? Because obviously these are big business services that are gonna help you out on your store out. So this tutorial isn't really about using and installing apps. Do have way more videos on those, including best app videos. Again, I'll leave them in the description below. Essentially, the main thing about Shopify is apps, and there's pretty much an app for everything within Shopify. You can search for them all through here, give them a read up, see what's well reviewed, and also see what is most installed to get the best apps for each thing that you wanna do within Shopify. So coming back to Shopify, really the next thing is to set up payments within Shopify. We can then come back to the homepage and the product checklist right here, set up payments now. We can go to view payment settings, and there's a few things that you can do with Shopify. The first is Shopify payments. That is going to charge you 1.6% per transaction plus 20p uh, processing charge in the UK. If you're in the States, maybe it's like 20 cents or something like that. Or you can set up PayPal as well. So people can use PayPal to check out on your site without going through that and putting all my personal information in on this site. Essentially what you do is just come down here to complete account setup. Just put your PayPal email address and account information in there. It's gonna be all set up for you. You can also add in Amazon Pay and any third party providers that you have. If you are signed up for them, literally just put your account details in, click on here, activate. Your account details will set you up and be linked within Shopify and your payment provider. That really is though the basics of setting up on Shopify. You have editing the themes of your store, adding products and customers, checking out your orders, your analytics of your sales, doing some marketing and some discounts, and then the apps, well, that is a whole different story. If you do want more information, you want some more helpful videos or anything like that, as I said, check out the description. I'll put some more in there for you. Other than that, best of luck with your Shopify store and everything. If the video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.